Hello, this is uh, Dave, and welcome uh, to Ecri Story. And you know what? The great thing, well, the exciting thing with the wolf uh, being away, we're meeting more people behind the scene. And ladies and gentlemen, this is Mark. Now, he is also known as, you can see the resemblance, the hyena. Um, I don't know. He laughs like a hyena, looks like a hyena. He's a hyena. Um, um, Mark, uh, are you okay with the hyena? That's 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 fine. <laughs> All right. Just say this is just general share advice and not personal advice. For those of you who don't know, Mark was with uh, Abraham Row Morgans and RBS Morgans for how many, like 20 years? Well, about, about 15, 15, 16 years. And you got out of that mentally in one in one in one piece, Mark. <laughs> that's right. Well done. Well done, chap. Right now. Uh, you're going to give us a little bit of a rundown of the markets uh, and what's what's happening here. So uh, far away, Mark, and get going on it. Yeah. Well, over the last week, there's still concerns. Well, a lot of concerns about um, inflation globally, uh, but more so uh, recently uh, concerns about Europe heading for a recession as the cost of living uh, crisis deepens. Uh, even the European central banks are under a lot of pressure uh, as inflation is more than four times their set target of 2%. So I think last month's inflation rate for um, Europe was 9.1%. Um, looking at the um, US markets, the US markets were closed for, for Labor Day. Um, and I believe the futures at the moment, they're sitting uh, fairly flat. Um, gold was flat, uh, sitting at US $1,708. Uh, oil uh, had a nice run up over 2.2% to around about 88.80 US a barrel now. Um, oil's been running um, overnight uh, ahead of OPEC's meeting, which has now happened. Um, and uh, there was a cut, only a small production cut of about 100,000 barrels of day, which was a bit of a surprise. I think the market expected a bit more. Um, for on the home front, um, all eyes will be on the RBA rate decision today at 2.30. Uh, the market expects another hike. Uh, I think we've had now three hikes of uh, 50 basis points or half a percent. Uh, and as we know, this is just going to add further to financial strain to house, households who have mortgages. Uh, probably not a bad time to, to look at your mortgage rates and uh, try and uh, renegotiate that with the banks. Uh, I don't think it's often the banks will call you and say, hey, Mr. Smith, you're paying too much on your mortgage. Uh, we're going to cut that rate for you. So uh, there, there's a tip for everyone. Uh, all right, Mark, it's interesting. but. I read a report that came out um, and the, the four-year mortgage rates, right? The variables are obviously going up with these higher, uh, um, with these higher interest rates, um, but the four years have actually come down a little bit. Is that because the banks are saying that here in Australia, they think we're going to go into recession and eventually RBA are going to have to reverse course? Uh, it doesn't necessarily point to recession, but uh, I, I think the, the talk, in the market uh, globally, they'll try and push interest rates as far as they can to try and curb inflation. But there's always a tipping point where you push rates too far and then it has a major negative impact on, on the economy, on jobs, um, on, on GDP. So it's a bit of a, a fine balancing act. And we've seen you know, the, the RBA in the past uh, in 2018, you know, push up rates and then uh, you know, uh, backtrack from that. Mark, I, lo I look at the Dow <clears throat> and I think for especially new members of Equity Store, you've got to understand why do we look at the Dow? Now, the Dow, it's, a, it's sort of, it's the indices, it's a stock market in the world, it's a US stock market and it's where most stock markets in the world tend to follow. They, you know, they say if uh, uh, America catch, uh, sneezes, we all catch a cold. Um, when I look at the price action here, Mark, I, I hate this. This looks absolutely terrible. And certainly it looks like we're going to retouch those lows and possibly go even lower. 
Now, my issue is we're, we're and, and we've been talking of saying this really for the last three or four months, we've got possibly a recession could be coming in Australia. And I do think that we are so built on our property market. Australians are so built on property. We're so built on our homes that, that have been worth more money every single year. That feel good factor that we've got lots of money will eventually disappear and we're going to stop spending. And, uh, and I think if that happens, I can see Australia having a recession. America's already in recession. That recession is just beginning of what could be a much deeper recession. Europe's in recession. You've got inflation at uh, 9% in UK at 13%. Interest rates at 1%, 2% are not going to do any good. I mean, surely interest rates at 1% and 2%, it's still stimulating the economy. Interest rates need to go a lot, lot higher to, um, to, to solve the problem. What's your, what's your take on that? And where do you think, Mark, you've been in this game a long time, because I remember even you know, talking to you in 2006, 2007, 2008 in the financial crisis, we looked at that. Where do you think this is going to go, this market? Well, I, I, th I think at the moment it's going to be quite volatile with you know, rising interest rates. And, and that's the trend we're on at the moment um, until such time where, you know, we get given guidance that interest rates are going to be put on hold um, or, or even reduced globally, you know, over in the US. And that might then spark a bit more, you know, activity in, in the markets and uh, uh, take a bit of pressure off. And so what would you think the catalyst now, right now, to see the stock markets around the world collapse 20, 30, 40%, what would be the catalyst that would make you think that could happen? Would it, would it be a deeper recession in America? Would it be uh, basically uh, uh, um, CPI numbers basically coming out, not slowing down, going higher? What would be the catalyst for you? Well, Obviously, you know, a deep, deeper recession, but it, it would be, you know, non or no reaction from from central banks, and and I think at this point they they will and they always have reacted when there's a cause of concern. Uh, so they still have some levers to to pull. Um, obviously, interest rates where they are, especially in the US, you know, there, there's not much of a lever to to pull there. That they might be other things they can pull out of their toolbox to try and stimulate, you know, the, their economies. So um, in America, we get CPI numbers every month. And here in Australia, I think they were talking about doing it monthly. Did they? Did they enact that? Because I'm just looking at here. The next CPI we've got is on the 26th of the 10th, 22, which is which is a, a fair way off. But uh, you think uh, the market would be getting pretty nervous about that? Yeah, I, th I, I think, you know, everyone's looking at CPI and, and what's happening and, and, and then from there, you know, what are our, our you know, reserve banks going to do or the central banks around the world going to do about it? So, so that's, that's the, the game at the, at the moment um, oh. for investors and large institutions. Mark, and just explaining to mums and dads why are CPI numbers very important? This is basically uh, the inflation numbers and, and the, the actual cost of living, how much food is going up, you know, petrol, these, these um, basics that we need to survive. And uh, you can see uh, recently, the, um, this is why the uh, RBN Australia started uh, lifting the rates as high, as high as they have, and they're going to keep lifting them higher. Uh, the uh, inflation is, is actually on an upward trajectory, which looks in all, all forms, pretty scary, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. So just with inflation, uh, with continuing rising prices, um, that hits, hits everyone, hits consumers, businesses, uh, you know, the cost of producing products and services. Um, and just at a household level, if all your uh, expenses go up, you're spending less. And then, you know, businesses are selling less. So it, it impacts the whole economy. Uh, and, and that means also governments then make less taxes out of, out of everyone. Um, and then you, you know, go into a spiral downwards. Hyena, you're full of, yeah. you're, 
full of full of knowledge thank you champion um so we're going to give you you know we, we said september or october um we, you know we we've been making sort of pretty good calls really since the days we started equity story i i think there's a high likely that sometime this month or maybe this uh, next month we could come down another 15 10 15 20 percent uh and the reason being wolf if you look at the dow historically um the Dow normally tra tra trades at around average around a P of 15, which is the average valuation of a company. At the moment, it is around 18. Um, if you start getting a recession, what it tends to do is overreact. And the general feeling is that normally, historically, it'll go back to 10 or 12 times. Now, if it does that, then you could easily see a, 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 a much bigger fall on the Dow. Uh, there's one really interesting stock, and it's a really fascinating, is Meta. And I'll tell you why, Meta's a little bit, uh, Mark, a little bit like the canary in the coal mine. Um, most of uh, Meta is largely owned by professional investors. So there's not too many retail moms and dads that actually own Meta, which is the old Facebook. It's been always been a very, very strong uh, professionally owned story by the funds. Now, they're trading at a P of 12. And uh, where, you know, similar stories like Apple at 26 and Microsoft are a lot more. And I was talking to a guy in the market. He's saying, Dave, listen, watch Meta. It's the canary in the coal mine because this stock will move before most of the others. Because, you know, and what the, what the base, basically the professional investors are saying here, we're not going to value you up here, uh, Facebook at uh, 20, 30 times. You're, you're going at 12 times because we've got a lot of issues going forward. And uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure. So I think it's a, it's a really interesting one to watch the price action in, in Facebook compared to the other stocks in America. And I think it's uh, possibly um, a really good sign of, of, of what could come in the future. Um, saying that, just having a quick look at the market. So thank you very much for that rundown, Hyena. It was very, very, very good. Um, I, I, are you as bearish as me or am I, or, or am I, or am I scaring you, uh, Mark? I no, no, not at all. I, th I think these things take time to, to play out as well. Uh, you know, it, it just doesn't happen overnight in, yeah. in most situations, but um, th there are warning signs. And, and obviously, Dave, your, your charts will hopefully, um, you know, give us an indication. Well, yeah, I mean, I, and again, you know, if you go back to, if you go back to 2008, and I still think the conditions in 2008 were so much better than they are today whereby interest rates were pretty high back here or pretty around 6%. They had a lot of room to lower the interest rates. Governments around the world had a lot of money for stimulus. You know, move forward where we're in a situation where we've got um, recession, we've got um, inflation, uh, we've got uh, issues, wars around the world. And, you know, sometimes life is just common sense. Are you telling me we're not going to do this? Right? It doesn't make sense that we don't. The only thing that maybe stops us going down is a world war, uh, a bigger war in Europe, whereby I think a lot of money would then revert into safe havens like the Dow and possibly our market. But at the moment, uh, I'm, I think we've got to be very, very careful. But what does this mean? Now, guys, members of the story, I mean, especially if you take your trial, you're here, you're seeing, you know, two guys, one looks like a hyena, another guy really good looking, giving, giving you some... Um, advice you might think oh what's he on about oh, you know i want to get into shares and and why would i want to get into shares when, when they're talking this what we're saying and this is important there is a golden opportunity that is coming now whether it's september october or november the charts will tell us and if we can buy these stories at 20 30 40 percent discounts in the long run it's going to be a fantastic buying opportunity so we're going to use the charts now. We're using the charts that, that, that uh, we look at the fundamentals that tell us this market could sell off. But where we are going to really make our money for you this year is getting you in at the right time and getting you in at these stories which have been largely sold off. Um, so, you know, we can't promise a lot of great ideas at the moment. Of course we can't. We're in a bear market. It's going down. But just hold your horses, hold your cash, Get ready to strike because when the time comes, it's going to be the golden opportunity. And uh, 
Mark, I mean, you remember every single pullback that you dealt with uh, with uh, Morgan's. Uh, what was it? Always a golden opportunity, wasn't it? Well, well, yes, yes. When when you look back at in hindsight, uh, but also over those periods, there's always pockets or sectors that do outperform even in in bad markets. Well, we're going to have a look at some because today we've had some stocks that put out some announcements. So, uh, SXE which is, um, and I'll read the, the, which I think is Southern uh, Electrical. Um, isn't it terrible? I, I, I get clients that say, Dave, Dave, please uh, call the whole name of the stock uh, because we, all, we know everything by these three-letter codes. It's Southern Cross Electrical Engineering. And um, this is a fantastic dividend pay around 7%. And again, it, it performs week in, week out, uh, Mark. And this one's giving a nice 7% dividend it's one of our, our dividend stories that we are really like. And obviously, if you're in that and you're looking for a dividend, hold it. And if you haven't got it and you're looking for a dividend, um, I still think, you know, it's worth a buy. You maybe get some more here. If, if we get more volatility in September, you get some at 63 cents. We'll get some there. Just try and accumulate in this area. Because, again, it's just this is a company that's delivered and delivered and delivered all year round and has done remarkably, remarkably well. Um, the other one, and you'll know this guy, Bill Beaumont, the, the, the guy that took uh, Mark uh, Northern Star to the Dizzy Heights. Great operator that's obviously taken over DVP. Uh, again, they put a nice 50% uh, uh, um, upgrade to their resource. Um, is it a buy for us at the moment? Not really. We just need to see it do a little bit better on the chart charts. But again, great to see uh, DVP just uh, delivering and uh, Certainly, definitely one for the watch list. Um, IPL uh, came out announcement, a little bit selling, uh, Wolf, I think, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Hyena, a little bit of selling uh, on that presentation. For me at the moment, it's still a hold. So we'll wait till, we'll wait till the end of the week and see where it is. Um, but I suppose, you know, we're always looking at where the money is at the moment. And really, the money seems to be in the lithium plays and the coal plays. And again, uh, coal was up again last night. Lithium, I'll bring this over because so you can have a good look and you can see some of the commodity prices. So here we've got um, iron ore is actually fighting back a little bit. Like Mark said, uh, coal was up. And uh, and uh, find a coal price. Where's coal? There's coal. A coal up 5.24%. Uh, largely because of all the issues in, um, they're saying in Ukraine. Um, and supply around the world, it's all about demand and supply. Well, there's just not the supply at the moment to cope with the demand. Um, so just having a look at some lithium plays, really interested to see, AKE. Um, Macquarie are very, very bullish on lithium at the moment. And Macquarie have actually got a $21 target price on AKE. Uh, for me, um, and we've spoken about this before, I think if you're going to get one, the one to get is PLS. Um, this has actually got a really nice little breakout. And if it, that looks like that, maybe by the end of the week, you're going to have to, I'll, I'll give you a stop on it, but that is what we might put out on Friday if it's still looking like that. Uh, great to see um, um, another stock that look, it looks really good. And I, I think it's maybe worth a, worth a trade is ASG. Um, ASG uh, is trading at 215. There's a $3 target price on that by one of the uh, by one of the major brokers. Um, again, what they're saying is that this is a company that had a superb announcement recently, and what they're saying is that um, uh, the basically the the new car supply constraints are starting to get themselves sorted out. So there's going to be uh, a lot more revenue growth coming out, out of ASG over the next six months. I actually quite like this, and I think uh, we will put this one on as a as a trade, and I think a sort of a buy around two fifteen. A uh, stop loss maybe just under that 197, and we'll target three dollars, uh, which I, which I think would be a nice little trade of the day. There are, like you said, Mark, there are a few sectors, aren't there? Even in these difficult times, which are holding out and looking reasonably good. That's right. Um, um, so tonight, um, uh, we I think we're gonna we've got a lot of people in these uh, coal stocks like uh, NAC. BCP, again, look at these little cold plays, absolutely having a fantastic run. Um, you know, what you have to do is just tighten your stops. They are very, very volatile, but at the moment, 
it's the go-to place. And as they say, the trend is your friend. Um, on that note, what I'd like to do is uh, I'm just say we're going to put one trade on ASG. Um, you know, if you're not in any of these cold plays, have a look. If you want to buy one or you're in one, you're not too sure, please come to Ask the Analyst live tonight. I'm there. I'm there with the Ocelot, the Claude Walker, the famous uh, um, analyst. So tonight at seven o'clock, join us. We can do stop losses. We can look at trends. And I've got Claude Walker there. And uh, I've had the hyena today, the amazing hyena. Um, thank you very much uh, and uh, for helping us. And uh, again, letting the Equity Story uh, members see your, see your beautiful face. <laughs> thanks, Dave. All right, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, Aida. Bye bye.